So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. It's a brand new year and I'm really excited to have Scott Rusnak back again with me. And Scott is about to become an expert EOS implementer. He's been doing EOS how many years now, Scott? Well, formally, this is coming up in my fifth year, but uh, there was a spell before that when I did all kinds of crazy things. Yeah, sure. okay. So you might remember, might remember Scott from one of our previous podcasts. He's back today because being a new year, it's a really great time to actually be thinking about what does the year ahead look like for you. And Scott has got some fantastic tips about designing your year before someone else does. Is that right? That's exactly it. Excellent. So before we get started, we always do the EOS thing. Can you give us a professional and a personal best, please, Scott? Well, I'd like to start with personal best. Um, gosh, this year we celebrated uh, 30 years of marriage. And so we were able to go to, we called it 30 for 30. So we went to Greece for 30 days to celebrate our 30th anniversary. So we were really intentional about that. And it was a total blast. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Actually, you know, I haven't been to Europe for a long, long time. How was it? Well, we were in Greece, and so we went to seven different islands, and I felt like I was in seven different countries, so it was really cool. Oh, fantastic. And professionally, what's been happening professionally? Well, it's been an amazing year. I feel a little guilty with everything that's going on in the world. Um, I was able to do 170 EOS sessions, but the cool part, and I'll be a little selfish, is that my book has sold out twice. We're going through a big rewrite right now, so I'm really excited about that. That is fantastic. Saw that twice. Woohoo. Go you. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so it's the new year. And we all know that, you know, people go, right, new year, new start. Let's start planning for the year ahead. Um, but setting goals is one thing. Knowing what your vision is another thing. What, what do you do to make sure that your year is the best year it possibly can be? Uh, Deborah, you teed it up perfectly. <laughs> uh, it's First of all, it's nice to be on a podcast with another uh, member of the Commonwealth. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions or any of that kind of stuff. I'm a big fan of designing my year to make sure that I really flow with my energy zones and I can decide when to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So I really get intentional before the year actually ends so that I know that on the first, second, third, I'm ready to go um, so that I'm surrounding myself with my family, my loved ones my friends, and the right clients so the year will be successful. So how do you do that? Yeah, um, it's hard to say no. But when you can say no with the right intentions in place, it can be, become a, a pretty amazing experience. And I've got something called the 515-150. I don't have, I found that I don't have the capacity to have more than five really good friends. So I've got five people that... I know if I needed to call them at two in the morning, they'd pick up the phone. And some of those people are family members as well. And then I've got something called the 15. And those 15 are people that I've been friends with for a heck of a long time. I really enjoy being with. And I use a tool called the People Analyzer, a fabulous EOS tool. And I tell my friends about it. I'm like, you're still a plus, plus, plus. And you get what it's like to be my friend. You want to be my friend. I want to be your friend. And we both got the capacity for each other. And you know, that group of five and 15, so that's about 20 people that I really mesh my life around. Um, you know, it's someone that, you know, you'll get a text back in 24 hours, they'll pick up the phone, what have you. And those are the people I really want to be intentional with my life. And I'll, I'll show you how I design my year around them in a little bit. Mm. But then I've got this group of 150, which are other EOS implementers, current and past clients. And I'll make sure that if those people reach out and other family members, if they reach out, that I'm there for them within 24 to 48 hours. And those rules really give me the freedom to then go and design my year, my quarter, and my days around all my priorities. I love that. I've never heard of GWC being used for your friends and family. I like it. <laughs> Watch out, friends. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Dirty little secret. I've had to fire some friends in my life because we have a three-strike rule at EOS. Okay, first strike, hey, look, is it you or is it me? Well, hey, look, if we're gonna be surrounding ourselves with people we love being with, because we wanna have a great effect in the world, when this happened, hey, that wasn't so cool. Was it me or was it you? And you just say, 
it happens again, we're probably going to have to break up. So there's some break, been some breakups in the world, and I'm sure some people have broken up with me as well. So you've really got to surround those people that fit your core values, so that you get each other, you want to be with one another, and you really got that mental, emotional, physical capacity to be around one another. Yeah, I love it. That's great. Um, and then, so if people fall outside of this 515, 150, then what happens to them? Well, they contact you and you say to them, you know, I've designed my year around my family, my passions, and a lot of the work that I'm doing. Um, and they ask, you know, if they want to get on my calendar for Thursday, the 24th of February, I'll say, well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got my year planned out and we can't meet then, but I'll be back probably mid-March. If you want to get together, then no problem. So I'm not saying that they're going to try out again, but if they want to have an open, honest conversation and discuss how to get back on my calendar, I get back on theirs. I'm an open book as well, but I want to make sure that those people flow around that. But the other thing I do, Deborah, and here, here's another one that'll make you laugh. Is I have a tool called the Delegate and Elevate Check. I say so I, I want to hang around a of fun, internet fit, issue passionate there. people. And so for me, that just allows me to say, hey, are these people one of those? Yep. Oh, and hopefully my internet is still good. I know we're half a world apart, but uh, hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, we just actually had a little bit of a break up there. So I'll just get you to repeat that if you don't mind. So you were talking about the delegate and elevate tool. Yeah. So if I really dig into my delegate and elevate checklist, which is a fabulous EOS tool, it'll tell me what do I love to do? What, I, what am I great at? I love hanging around passionate people. And if I can hang around with passionate people who are fun, like you, and very focused on getting what they want from their life, that makes it really easy for me to say yes or no to those people. Sure. Cool. I, I'm, I'm really fascinated. I haven't really thought about using some of these tools in my personal life. This is fantastic. Okay, cool. So it's not as if, so it, it, you know, what you're saying is that by having some structure and by using these tools, you're able to make decisions more easily. And it doesn't mean it's set in stone. It means that you have an opportunity to decide whether or not it's worthwhile um, doing something with it. Is that right? Absolutely. You know, and Deborah, we've got something called the EOS Life, which I flipped upside down. Um, for me, the most important thing in my life is I need time to pursue other passions. Right. Okay. But I want to make sure that I'm being compensated appropriately. I'm making a huge impact on the world, doing what I love with people I love. Well, why can't we do that not only at work, but in our own lives as well? So I really try to embrace that in my own life to make sure and it comes right back to that delegate and elevate. I want to hang out with passionate people and clients as well. If they're not passionate, they really want to push for more. They're probably not a good fit for me. They want someone who's just by the book and they're going to do it like this. I'll refer them to someone else. I want to have some fun and I want them to be passionate as well. <laughs> Life is too short, right? <laughs> to not have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's important to me. So you've got your 515, 150, using your GWC, using your Delegate and Elevate. You've also got this planner kind of tool as well, haven't you? Tell me about that. <laughs> Well, in my Delegate and Elevate checklist, the second thing down, other than hanging out with passionate people, I, this is going to sound crazy. I don't think I'm OCD, but I love planning out my year. And I've done that since the age of, gosh, 18, 19, when I was trying to become a professional cyclist. I would map out the races through the year that I thought I could win. And so I brought that into my adult life before I joined EOS. So I just said, look, why can't I take a, here's a sample of my 12-month calendar, why can't I take a 12 month calendar and really get intentional at the start of the year and highlight those days where I'm gonna be skiing, surfing, traveling the world with my, my wife and really hold those close to my heart to make sure that nobody infringes on those. Yeah, and so the, for the viewers who couldn't, uh, they're listening but can't see that, I'll share a snapshot on the website. It's fantastic. So it's basically what we would call an annual planner, and there are yellow days highlighted out, which is where Scott's going to take his holidays for surfing, for cycling, for being with his wife, doing all the fun things, yeah? Yeah, and then the other part, because we're both members of the Commonwealth, I'm a dual citizen, so not only do I take July 4th, and it's in blue, 
I take July 1st. That's Canada Day. So I put those things in my calendar as well. The other thing I do is I put my kids' birthdays. Hey, my one son is birthday is Christmas Day. Well, that's an easy one, but I take Boxing Day the next day. So nobody's touching me then. Yeah. Uh, the, the 6th of January is an important day. It's one of my other son's birthday. I want to make sure I'm intentional with all these things. So my wife's birthday, my mother's birthday, these things are in my calendar just to make sure that Yes, again, these are the most important things in my life. I want to make sure that I don't miss those important dates. Mm, that's, that's really cool. Very good. And then the scary part, and I know maybe some of my clients will hear this, is that I get really intentional on the days that I want to work with clients. And when I was looking at last year, I had about 170 client days, which is a heck of a lot of client days. It's yeah, <laughs> probably a little too much, but that's okay. I love helping. This year, I've decided I want to try to do no more than 100 client days. And when I was mapping my year out, I just have wrapped up some annuals in December and January. I told them about what I was doing for the year. And they, my clients like, that's a really darn good idea. So we went through the exercise of them mapping out their year, me mapping out my year. We got intentional on sessions. And again, most of the, uh, the uh, people listening or watching this podcast can't see all these dates, but I've got blue dates in there for my client sessions. So here's what I want to be able to do my sessions, preferably not on Mondays. So it's midweek and the odd Friday is when I want to do my client sessions. And I know that January is incredibly busy and we go through this 90 day world with EOS. Well, that means April's going to be really busy. Well, then that means that July will be busy. So I try to map it out with that flow in mind as well. That's great. Yeah. And we have a slightly different financial year over here. So uh, it's our March that is a really busy, busy time. But like, the same principle applies, right? It's making sure that you've got those times kind of mapped out. So, And it also, I guess, helps you in terms of if you know that you want to do 100 consulting days or session days, mm -hmm. then there's a certain number of clients that you can work with, right? So you're not trying to push yourself too much in terms of the number of clients would that be fair yeah yeah absolutely um you know at, at eos we have something called a scorecard so i have my own personal scorecard i try to never do more than three sessions a week two is the optimal number so my scorecard number says two because yeah. we need to be able to rest gain clarity prepare in between and so it's really important to make sure that when we're doing those session days we're super present and there's no distractions before we walk into that room so yep. how do you, in terms of working with your clients, um, I, you know, so for people listening in, they go, well, you're an EOS implementer. That's easy. You get to control how things work. But this is the same for anybody who runs a business, right? Anybody mm -hmm. can actually take this discipline and go, this is what is important to me. Yeah. Well, interesting enough, when I was um, working at my last business, which was called School Logic. That was a lot of airplane time. And I designed my year so that every second week I would be away from home Tuesday to Thursday. So I'd be New York, Chicago, LA, whatever it was on an airplane, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The following week, I was in the office. I was preparing, getting ready. But then every second week, again, Tuesday to Thursday, I was out client facing. So it is very similar to what we do at EOS. I knew that every second week for three days, I'd be on the road. Now, sometimes... That schedule got thrown in the mix, but I tried to follow that structure because when the school season would kick in with school logic, after Labor Day, eh, I'd probably say for the first six, seven weeks of the start of the school year, I was on the road, but only for three days a week. And I knew if it was more than three, I would just get burnt out because it was a real possibility. Yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. So can you give us some tips around how you say no to people? Because, you know, when you love to help people like we do, it can sometimes be really hard to say, mm, no, that doesn't work or no for another reason. How do you how do you do that? Yeah. So then let's go backwards again to that people analyzer. First of all, core values. Yep. When I meet a potential client, in fact, I was mountain biking with a potential client today. Absolutely passionate. Amazing. We talked about his business, where he wanted to be, but I realized that he didn't fit one of our really important core values, humbly confident. Wow. It was all about him, and he seemed that the business was driven around his ego. And I said to him, have you ever been coached before? 
Have you ever been directed in your business? Have you ever brought someone in from the outside to work with your leadership team? And he said, no, you know, I prefer if you just worked with me and I'd like to change the flow. So I took him through the people analyzer in our, po- in our process. I said, I'm probably not the right, not the right fit for you, but I think I can find someone else. So that was a very easy no for me. Okay. So again, he was passionate, but he didn't fit the people analyzer. I don't think he got what we did. I think he wanted it. I know he had the capacity, but when there's a strike there, it really sets off a little bit of a stoplight, a red light in the stoplight going, okay, we need to stop now. I clarify and he agreed it wasn't the right fit. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So by having those kind of boundaries and those rules and not too much rules, but the, the, the frameworks, it means you have the ability to explain, um, you know, the, the, the reasoning, I suppose, and give them a, a, a reason. Yeah, for saying in no. fact, and there's a client I'm talking to right now that they want to onboard. And I said to them, look, uh, the week of January 24th works really well. Um, and here's the reason why, because we get into the, at the start, we meet every 30 days. So yeah. I said, after that, the week of the 21st of February works good and the 21st of March. So they understood that flow. And I said, if we're going to commit to move forward, you need to understand that. And then 90 days thereafter. And so they're getting their head wrapped around that right now, because if we change the journey to a certain degree, this thing we call EOS, it just doesn't work. So I get on the same page with them on my calendar. And when I show them my calendar, I actually give them a snapshot of the calendar so they don't know I'm faking it. They really (laughs) understand. And so we'll have a conversation this week to see if that flow works for them. And if it doesn't, again, I'll refer them to someone else because I've got to make sure that works for me and them if I'm tripping over another client to serve another client, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense. Cool. Okay. So you, you put together that planner. Did you use some kind of special software? Is it an Excel spreadsheet? Like what is it that um, creates that beautiful piece of work? Uh, Deborah, I'm a, I'm a caveman. You're a caveman. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you drew it. <laughs> yeah. Other than this thing called Zoom, um, yeah. if I look to the right, I've got a, a planner on the wall that we talked about before we started this session. Yeah. And it's just in ink and it's all written down. But for the purposes of this podcast and a number of talks I'm doing through through the year, this is just an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. It's the simplest thing. It goes on the fridge downstairs. My wife would love it. It was in Google map. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting it on the calendar. Here's what the year looks like. Yeah. And you know, the wonderful thing about it, and I don't want to sound robotic or mechanical, but um, I've got a favorite uncle. You can have a favorite uncle, right? You can have a favorite uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a favorite uncle who helped me with my book. And I absolutely love him to death. His name's Rob Butler. There you go, Rob. Call it. But his daughter is getting married in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He said, hey, Scott, it's June 25th. It's a Saturday. I was like, oh, geez, I had a client session on the 23rd which is a Thursday, but I really want to go early to go fishing with them a little bit. So this allows me to then talk to my client and said, say, would you move to the 21st or 22nd so I can fly to Canada so I can go fishing with them before this wedding? And you know, then I block the entire week out after, which leads me into Canada Day and July 4th. So this allows me to have a really open, honest discussion with friends, family, clients at 5 and 15 and that 150, say, here's how my year is looking. Do you mind if we make a little change here or there? Yeah. And I think most people understand, especially when they, you know, when they understand why you're wanting to do that. So I really applaud that. So the old wall planner, um, I've got one too. I absolutely love it. And I get teased about it being old fashioned. But for me, it's a really great visual snapshot of exactly what the year looks like. And it means if I'm on the phone to a client and they're asking about a date, rather than trying to go through calendars and seeing what so I can look at my wall planner and go, these are the days I've got free. It makes it a whole lot easier. Um, yeah. Do you find the same in terms of that visual element? Every time I walk out of my office, I look at it. Mm-hmm. I can look at it and I'll see that, okay, the 1st of September, I know what's going on. So subconsciously, I know when I walk out of my office every morning to go do a session or I walk out to go mountain biking or skiing, I know exactly how I want the year to flow. So I don't need to come back to this little eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It's right there. And if anyone else wants to look, like, look at it, it's right there as well. And I think it's a tool that has changed my entire life, as simple as it is. Yeah, 
Fantastic. I know Gino talked about it in one of his um, talks to us a couple of years ago, and that just sort of blew me away. Even just the process of thinking about, you know, what is the ideal amount of time that you want to spend at work? And it's different for all of us. This is the thing that I kind of struggled with because I thought that, um, you know, initially it's like, well, um, you need to work five days a week um, for however many, 48 weeks in a year, whatever it might be. But Gino says, no, what is your optimal? Like, where do you actually perform your absolute best? And for some people, that might be 70, 80, 90 hours week for others it will be 2030 and there's no right nor wrong but it's about recognizing what works for you both from a an hours per week but also a number of weeks in the year how much holiday do you need to to ensure that you're refreshed I've just come back from a two and a half week holiday and it's the first time in a long time I've taken that break and I have to say it was just phenomenal um, I now need to make sure that we have those booked in regularly throughout the year well, we're on the same page. I'm looking at a Venn diagram as well. Like I, I get into all these goofy things. Yeah. So picture the three circles and I'll send you the PDF of it. Yes. We've got one circle up top that says family and vacation. One circle over here that says other passions. And then one circle on the bottom that says my EOS practice. Yeah. Last year, when I calculated the dates, and I'll look at it again, my practice took 170 days. So that was 46.5% of my time. Not, not to get too deep. Yeah. Um, my other passions took 26.5% of my time, but family and vacation took 27%. So I just calculated my dates, but my family, or sorry, my practice took a really big circle of time. And this year I was very intentional. I said to my kids who are 23 and 25, and my wife's like, I'm going to dial that back. So my practice this year will have a smaller circle. Uh, it will only take 27% of my time. <laughs> so my family vacation and passions will then get 63% of my time. And I actually think I'll be a better EOS implementer because of it. I'll have more time to really prepare, more time for clarity, and I'll be more present with my family and my other passions. Mm, fantastic. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your book? You mentioned before that your book has got its second, second sold out. Is that right? Tell us about the book. Tell us what... Um, what prompted you to write it and what it's about? I've been writing the book for about 10 years and I, I finally published it last year. The book is called Design Your Life Before Someone Does It For You. Mm -hmm. And it's the Entrepreneur's Field Guide. And it leads in with a bit of a silly story of me as an 11 year old kid on a mountain uh, called uh, Marmot Basin in Jasper, Alberta, Canada. And as a little kid, I was really a passionate kid. I had a paper route. I want to make my own money. I want to become a professional athlete of some sort. So I jump on this expert chairlift. And my day of having fun on the ski mountain is by myself, minus 10, minus 20 Celsius. Leave me alone. Ski in the trees. I don't want to be bothered. So I get on this chairlift. And it comes to a stop. I'm like, oh, it's broken. This is not going to be good. Well, this wiry old character sits down beside me. And he looked like he was in a back alley brawl. His stuff was all torn. And the lift, he looks at me and says, hey, have a good ride, kid. I said, like, have a good ride? Yeah, you're going to have a good time. So the guy that jumps on the chairlift, he says to me, what are you doing over here, kid? Where are your parents? I said, well, I ski alone. He's like, wow, that's frightening. Well, where do you ski? I said, well, I ski over there on the spruce line stuff on this expert run. He's like, you're going to kill yourself, kid. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I just, I just go over there. He's like, well, 20 meters to that side, you'll fall off the cliff. Why don't you come with me? We go to the top of the lift. We push forward. We hike for another 34 minutes. We ski the back country. I said, you're crazy. He's like, no, kid. If you go past where everyone else thinks is the top and you push further and you don't overthink it, he said, I want you to just take two turns at a time and you'll get the most incredible ski run of your life. And I was 11 years old. And that had such an impact on me. I don't overthink things. I push further. I just take life two turns at a time, knowing that if I plan out my year, my ski run, my business, I can get to the bottom of anything. You always blow me away every time we talk. We've got so many stories and so many great ideas. So, so the book is about designing your life where somebody else does. And I'm assuming it actually gives you lots of tips and tools and things that can actually help you with that. Is that right? Yeah, so there's about 40 lessons and exercises, much like the annual planner, the weekly planner. We talk about some EOS stuff in there, but I also talk about who do you surround yourself? What's your story? What do you want to get out of your life? What do you want your legacy to look like? So when you're close to that point where you're not moving quite like you are anymore, what's that thing going to look like? So it, it's been an absolute blast writing it. The rewrite is really fun, and I hope to have it out for February. 
Oh, fantastic. We'll make sure we have a link to that in the podcast as well as we'll let you get um, pre-order it. Hey, well, look, we're running out of time. It just goes so quickly. So I guess before we kind of finish up, I'd love to just get three tips that we could give to the listeners they could actually use in their life, in their business, in their life. What would be your top, Scott's top three tips? Well, I, I, I just hate to put a plug in for all these EOS things we do, but... It's hard not to, right? Yeah, Take the EOS tools and put them into your life. Yeah. Right. So I'm talking at the EOS conference. I'll put a plug in for that on April the 22nd in Orlando. Yep. And my talk is going to be design your life before someone else does it for you. Use those EOS tools. Use the people analyzer. Yep. So there's the first one. Who are you going to surround yourself with? The second tip is use the delegate and elevate to make sure you're really getting what you want out of your life. What are your passions? What do you love to do? What are you great at? Stay in that box and really try to focus in that box. Yeah. And then the last one, which um, I have to credit uh, Kerry Neufeld for, uh, he wrote a book called At Your Best. And uh, I guess I sort of, I'm a fan of R&D. I researched and developed and maybe ripped off and duplicated a little bit, Kerry, but I absolutely love your book. And he talks about that 5, 15, 150. And yeah. I really try to be intentional with that. And, you know, maybe seven, someone's got a 7, 14, 140. But for me, you know, I want to surround myself with the right people and make sure that I'm getting everything I want out of my life as well. So those are my top three tips. Use those EOS tools. Put them into your life. Design your life before someone else does it for you. And think about 5, 15, 150. Why not? It's a great concept. I'm, I'm thinking about it already and I haven't raised the podcast yet. <laughs> but I'm focused on cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Hey, Scott, look, a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. If people would like to get in contact with you, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, Scott at scottrustnack.com. Wonderful. And we will put a couple of things in the... Um, where, where we publish podcasts, we'll put a couple of links. So we'll put those three circles. We'll give you the, the snapshot of that um, planner so you can see that and a link to your new book for when it, or the re-release when it comes out. And I don't have New Year's resolutions, but I do hope in the next 12 months I can uh, get back to the land of the Kiwi because I absolutely love New Zealand. And we've never met in person, but we're besties. So I don't know how that works. Okay. You have to come and visit and we have to go mountain biking in the forest and all that kind of stuff. It'd be fantastic. But yeah. And I'm looking forward. I mean, hopefully if our prime minister allows us, we should be able to travel later on this year. So I'm looking forward to coming to the US as well. Let's do it. Perfect. Hey, thanks, Scott. As always, absolute pleasure. Um, talk to you soon. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you.